All right, welcome to Balanced Developer Diaries number 40. And today we're going to talk about a couple new features that have been just added. One is a checkout and check in ability for your items in, within NAB, meaning data source widgets and apps, and then also linking that to get to track changes and then allow for rollbacks. So let me, let's begin, let me go here. Okay, so again, this is unscripted. Sean, I'm just jumping on to show you this. So right now, nothing is turned on. So this looks the same as it did before. I go in, I can make modifications, I can save, and I'm done. So I think the first thing, Sean, is we'll just show the check-in and out. And so obviously the current setup is you go into a widget data source app. You have it locked for the time being that you're inside maintaining it. As soon as you press save, anybody else can grab it. So That's like how it's always worked. Right. And I have two sessions going. One I'm logged in as one user and another one I'm logged in as a different one. So to show that... Um, yeah, you know, it's currently in use. So this is, you know, how it was before. I'm going to get out. Okay. So first to turn on the check out and in, you need to go to portal admin settings. And I'm just going to search for nab. You're going to see this new option, enable check out in feature. So I'm just going to check that. And hit save. Okay. So that is now. So the first thing you're going to notice is that there is a new section with an app builder called checkouts. This section will show any items that you have checked out. Not every item that's checked out, just items that you, this account, this user has checked out. So by default, and Sean, if I miss anything, you know, feel free to jump in. Um, if I just go and click on that data source again, by default, because the checkout and in features turned on, you're in view only mode. Whereas previously, you would be in update mode, you know, assuming that no nobody else was in this particular data source. Correct. So if you want to make modifications on the row menu, Click it and you're going to see a checkout option. I'm just going to check it out. So I have this checked out. Well, I can check this out too. And then if I go to checkouts, I see the two items that I have checked out. So now that I have an item checked out, I guess. Should we talk about like how I can be making changes and then those changes aren't reflected just yet? Yeah, yeah. And I think, and the other thing to point out too quickly was it's mm -hmm. probably obvious there was a checkout and edit and it's, and then now if Johnny clicks any of these, it's, he goes into it because it's checked out. Now he can make changes because it's checked out by him. Now, if somebody else went into, attempted to go into that, which it do. So it still shows that it's checked out, but if we go to checkouts, we'll see that it's, you know, it's not it, checked out by this user. Right. And if I click it, it tells me who is it checked out, but I can't, I'm in view only. Yeah. And if, and if you go back to that main list and we go to the yeah, columns, yeah. Yeah, I know you want to show that. So you could add a checked out by column as well. So you see who has it checked out. Okay, so I'm gonna make a modification. I am going to, uh, I'll add sales, your date sales column. Yep, fine, I'm gonna hit save and exit. This looks a little different now. <clears throat> we have a save, a commit, and commit and check in. And Sean, sure, yeah. If so, I say anything so, wrong, jump in or you know. Okay. Um, 
So the save is going to save just like you're used to. However, that save is only for you. If you hover over that, Johnny, hover over that save button. There you go. Save your changes. These changes will only be visible to you. So nope. when you have something checked out, sorry, when you have something checked out, anything you do is only for you. It's as if it's your own local copy of this data source of the widget of the app. Right. And when you just do a regular save, they're only going to be visible to you. Then we have the commit. And the commit is going to perform the save, but commit your changes so then it's visible to everybody. But you're not and, checking it in. Yeah, and, and, and not to be confused with the git commit. We're using the same terminology. If right. you're committing your changes, you're making it available to everybody. You'll see later how, you know, with, with Git, what 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 is different. It really isn't different, but UI wise, yes. Other yes. than requesting a message, so so this again will save your changes, but commit them so then they're visible to everyone. And then the last option is. To do a commit, which is the same thing, save and commit so they're available to everybody, but also check in, you're done. And the thought process, I, you know, I'm just going off a whim. So when you have something checked out, I'm making changes and going back and forth. I want to look at them beforehand. I might be doing saves. I'm not committing anything. Once I'm done, and maybe I have multiple changes to do, but I'm, I, you know, I have three items I have to take care of. I took care of the first one. I might just say commit, but I'm not checking it in because I still have two other items to deal with for maybe this widget or the app, et cetera. So that's why we have these two options of commit and then the commit and check in. So here I'm just going to save. So just all I did was just add this column to the grid. So we have this app, Let me just launch it. So this app uses that grid, I assume. Yes. Okay. And so now we see that year-to-date sales. However, if I switch over to my other account here, I'll do the same thing to launch this app. I won't see that change because you did not commit. Did not commit. I did not commit them. Right. I guess before I we keep on going, is there any questions or anything? I, I'm not paying attention to chat. If anyone has any questions, feel free to hit the chat up. Okay, so <clears throat> that was checking it out, making a change. You only see it lo like locally for yourself. No one, no one sees that. Um, and then you, of course, could then either come back in and say save, and you could do the commit and check in. Or you have the option here, which is just check in with changes. And then we also have discard changes. So if you've made changes and you had hit, you have hit save, so you're seeing them locally, but you've never committed, you could just check it back in and say, discard everything I've done. I, I don't, I don't care. I don't want to deal with it. Um, I don't like what I did, et cetera. Sorry. A couple questions. Um yep. Does this apply to widgets only, or can you check out the entire app? Yeah, you can you can check out an in, in application as well, but it's it's not checking out all of the widgets and data sources automatically beneath it. So Johnny just checked out an app. So if he makes changes to this app, it'll only be local to him. Now he just happened to have all three of these already checked Check. out. Yes, it, it, yeah. it's only checking out the app. It's not you know traversing down and saying, oh, let me check out everything. Oh, and then is the basic save by session or by user profile? Is the basic save by session? By user. So I think like, you know, we're saying my changes are local to me until I commit. It's not by session ID. It's by, oh, the, it's by user, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm logged in as a uh, major. So it's it's by user major. Okay. All right. Th those are the only questions so far. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's all good. So then, you know, we could just 
choose to check in with changes or discard changes. I'll just check in with changes. I'm happy with what I did. And then so this is the same thing as if he would have clicked the commit and check in on that other screen. Yes. So you could do it that way as well. Or you can do it from the menu here. Right. So I'm just going to reload this app as the other user. Sorry. And so now I see that change. Um, <clears throat> and I also do find that like once I've been using this, I'm checking things out and then I'm mostly probably, I, at least personally, I'm living in this section more. Um, this is just me personally, but just seeing all the items I've checked out and just dealing with them here. But, and then also I think we should bring up the new app. Let me reload what happened here. Yeah. So what if someone has something checked out? And you need to get to it. You know, so you, you'd want to give access, this NAB checkout manager, you'd only want to give it access to, you know, people who should have the ability to remove somebody's checkout record. Right. So if somebody's out, out on vacation or something, you need to get their stuff in, um, you know. Like Sean said, you could come in here and then you could just say, I'm, I'm I'm checking all these in. I am logged in as major and it's me. But in theory, you know, another account could have access that you're going to see all items checked out by everyone. And then you can choose to commit and check in. From here. Or so, check in and discard. Correct. Here are your two options. So this, this same, you know, whether it's a widget, whether it's a data source, whether it's an app, it all works the same way. Like the concept Johnny just went over. Yes. No, no differences. Um, so, the, yeah, so I'm, is there anything else I'm missing? I can't, for the check-in or check-out check-in? Uh, I don't think so. I, you know, I, I don't, any, any, if there's any questions, throw it in the chat. Okay. All right. Let's look at the other option to use to tie Nitro App Builder with Get. So I'm going to let me just get out of here real quick. I don't have any. Go back to Portal Admin. And again, I'm going to search Nab. And here we have the option of enable Get. Johnny, sorry, one one question just came in. Um, can you preview? So I was in, you know, you were in the NAB checkout manager. Can you preview their changes before committing or throwing out their changes? And I guess so. You you you. That's a good. That's a good question. Like because because I I can click if I click the widget, I could obviously see the state of it. But if it's not my checkout you won't and i'm see. clicking someone else's i wouldn't and that's that's probably you know so this is the first pass and that that's probably something we want to enable from the checkout manager is it doesn't matter who you are launch um, it just i want to view what what it looks yeah. like yeah yeah i would think so so you know these are like i said this is this these are, this is the first pass so i'm sure we're gonna so that's a great question because that's a good point <laughs> So it's probably something we're going to want to add. Yeah. Because as of right now, the answer is no. Right. Okay. Was there any other ones? Or are we good? Uh, that was it. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> why can't I get this thing to hide? Hold on. This Zoom bar is just really... Um, okay. So we have this other option, which is enable Git. Um you would need to have created your a Git repo already for a dedicated Git repo for this uh, instance in for Nitro App Builder. I did that already prior to this Zoom. We just have this empty Git repo. Um, 
I'm going to then request, we, we need one thing right away is the URL, okay? So I'm just gonna go grab that URL. So I'm just copying it. And I'm clicking enable Git, and I'm gonna paste this URL in. Um, beforehand, I guess I should say, to make it easier, we do have, I would have, I, I would do this first to make it easier for myself. You could just type it in, we'll prompt you, but I wanna bring this up, Sean, is that within the NAB checkout manager, we have a get user section. And let me just show add. So it's what, who's the valence user? And then their get username, the email, and then the token. The token is an access token that you create. So for example, I'll show you. Maybe show maybe show the link from the help of that enable Git. Yes. This one, you're gonna the blog post. Yeah. So we do have a blog post going through. And I guess this is probably good to start right here. Um, you do need to have node installed in your IBM I. Okay. Um, and get installed. Get installed is just it's just using those features, but the repo doesn't have to be on the IBM I. It doesn't matter. It's just it needs get installed so we can make the communication calls between the IBM I and wherever the Git repo is. Um, so what I'm gonna say real quick is I want to show this when I want to just because we were talking about the access tokens. So this get token. I do have this dummy user I created really quick. And if you, you know, like for this UI for GitLab, if I go to preferences, I can go to access tokens and then add a token. I've already done that yesterday, but so that is one of the main prerequisites. You need to have those users linked up. But also the major prerequisite is you need to have node installed on your IBM I, the Git package installed, and then you need to run the node server. And we talk about like, you know, we recommend PM2 because that will launch the server and keep it up and running for you, um, unless you do an IPL or something, but <clears throat> is, there, is there any questions I'm going too fast, Sean, or? Yeah, so basically there's some setup involved before you enable Git. If you were to try to enable Git before you did any of this, it would recognize it and say, hey, you know, the valence node service isn't running. Yes. Um, so you'd follow the instructions here to get your node service going. And then once you have that, you know, according to the instructions on that blog post, you would you would create a new Git repository, whether you're using GitHub, GitLab, or anything else, it doesn't matter. And you would also need to get grant access to users, um, you know, to in, that will be allowed to write and update and read this repository. And that's where in the NAB checkout manager, where we set those users up. But, you know, you need to create those users on your actual GitHub, GitLab, you know, repo. Correct. <laughs> Unless you already have them, you know, you just got to link them up. And then, of course, give rights to those users. So members, you know, one, two. All right. And like you were saying, so we, you know, our IBM I already had nodes, has node installed, everything's set up to go. Um, we don't have the node server started, so I'll just do that right now. Um, I'm going to go into root. And the the node is actually within, let's see where we talk about that. <clears throat> the root directory for your valence instance, and then there's a folder labeled node. So the path to the valence instance slash node. And you can see that here. So we're valence six, and then there's a folder node. So I'm gonna go into that. And then I'm just gonna do a 
just like the docs say, say node app.js. Node.js. And we do recommend PM2 um, to keep it up and running because as soon as I close this terminal, it's, it would kill the node server. So, so it's running now. <clears throat> so now we've, we need to do a little setup here, giving it the repo and let's see what would happen. Okay. So because I'm logged in and right, Sean, you can clarify this, but because I'm logged in and I already have credentials set up within the NAB checkout manager, it found that and it's going to use those. Right. So otherwise, and, get user and token would have been blank. Correct. But, but this just needs to, for the first time, because it just recognized you just, you know, changed or, you know, added a Git repo, it's going to sync and get everything to the current state of your apps, your widgets, and your data sources. So I'm going to hit sync. And like we say, be patient. While that's syncing, I'd like to point out that I posted uh, two links in the chat. If anybody's uh, curious for to look at those documents that Johnny was showing, these are the same links that you would probably have seen in our newsletter. But I thought, you know, for convenience, they're, they're there as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. So... It says it's, it's completed. So let's go back. I mean, I could do a refresh here. No, let's just see what it pushed. So we've got a folder of apps, data sources, and widgets. And then within that folder, we see the, the apps that are in there, the data sources that are currently there, and the widgets. So let's... Let's make some changes. So at this point, checking in and checking out, all that stuff's exactly the same. Correct. But the only difference is, is as you commit, you know, as opposed to saving, as you commit, we're going to prompt you for a git commit message, and it's going to actually commit the changes to that git repository. Correct. And also, I guess it's good to note that a prerequisite for turning on enabling Git is you have to have that check in, check out turned on. It would, it would, it would stop you if you tried. It would stop. You. Okay. All right. So, do we want to push something or? Yeah. Let me. Uh, I'm going to go. I already have this app uh, checked out, which is great. So, I'm just going to quickly add a. I don't know. I'll, I'll add a widget and then make it a pop up. And man, this thing's always in the way. Okay, that's fine. I'm just going to leave it as. And then we'll just add a behavior real quick. So when we click, I want to filter this widget. It's not a custom. Okay. All right, I'm gonna hit save. <clears throat> so now, like Sean said, it ex looks exactly the same. <clears throat> this time I'm just gonna hit commit, I'm not gonna check it in. Here you're presented with a request to enter a get message, commit message. So add it. So now it's going to take a little longer because it's actually going out to the repository and committing these changes. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Can we look at that repo really quickly just to see that push? Yes. So CNX user one, that's me, add a customer form. So we see the app was changed. And that was the only thing that was changed because it's all I did was add a widget to the app. So let me go back here. And 
We have get history. That's a new item that is there because Git is turned on. So for this app in question, let's go see the history. So we have the original sync. That's when we first turned it on and it, you know, took whatever um, the state of the app was at that time and put it on your, uh, put it on that Git repo. And then we see added customer form. So this is the one I just did. And if I made another change and another change that committed it, you would see multiple. This is just the history for it. So I can click on added customer form. <clears throat> And it'll show you the changes. I mean, it's it's just, you know, our configurations, but you can see what was changed and which allows you to is also, if you wanted to. <clears throat> Johnny, do you want to click that help and just see? Because sometimes if you've got something, this can help you try to understand what happened to it. Like what were the changes So that's the valence assistant that's going to, you know, interpret these changes and at least, you know, try and describe what was changed. Because, you know, obviously we know what was changed, but oftentimes you're going in not really knowing. Um, a new pop-up window was introduced. Yep. Uh, okay. So sometimes it'll be helpful. Maybe sometimes it won't. <laughs> right. And then here I can click on the synced one. If you had many commit, many com history items, meaning you committed this thing multiple times, right? It would be in that order. It would be there. And then, <clears throat> yeah, so you can then see, you know, this is the original one, but all right. And then this is going to be the same as all of the other ones. Um, widgets, data sources. Am I missing anything else, Sean? Yeah, I mean, I think essentially, essentially, um, essentially that's it. So all the Git integration did was, you know, when you commit or if you remove or, or anything, it's going to actually, you know, update the repository. So, um, you know, and just to reiterate, you know, you can have the checkout, check in, check out feature on by its by itself. You do not have to um, enable Git, um, but in order to enable Git, you must have the check in, check out. Um, there is. Ultimately, I think in some cases where, you know, what, what, there should be um, rollbacks, you know, we'll, we'll, we thought, <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember if it made the cut, but we were, you know, definitely by the next release, we might have it implemented in some spots already, but the, the, there'll be a, you know, ability to roll back your changes to. Once they've been committed. Yeah. So in this case, Johnny may have, may have said, you know, I didn't like that sh those changes I made to my app. I'm going to roll back to the uh, original, to the synced, and then it would roll everything back and update, you know, the, the database on the IBMI to be the original state of that application. So I think that's, uh, I think that's really it. Any, any questions? And I think we can show that. The rollback? I think we don't show the rollback, and this could be wrong. Oh, when it's the original. When it's committed, when it's not uh, checked in. Oh, I see. That makes Cause sense. That's... You, Because you're when you have something checked out, you're in your own, like, think of it as, like, and uh, wording could be poor, but, like, in your own, like, like environment, right? Your own little, like, uh, container. Um, and once it's checked in, then it's, Everyone can see it. It's just like normal. 
And then you could should have the ability to roll back because we would be rolling back into the not your little uh, container, but to the true files for everyone. So if 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 you if you want to roll something back, in other words, it cannot be checked out. Correct. It needs to be available. Then you will have the rollback feature. That's right. So now we're looking back at the changes to this app. We should see two commits or three commits. Synced, added form, and updated title. So, and if I run this app, I just put some an X on the, the title. Um, so I should be able to see since now it's checked in. There we go. I do roll back. So I want to roll back to this. I think I think it's a little confusing when you say now that it's checked in. I, I know I got confusing basically, or you say it it's not checked out by anybody. <laughs> right. It's not checked it's, out. It, it's available. So yep. you can see so the rollback is available. Exactly. Yes. So then this gives us the ability to say roll so, back. So we're going to roll back. So in theory, we should lose that title change for the app. And we request you to type rollback. Uh, Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm thinking uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think it did it. I don't know. Uh -huh. it did. Yeah. All right. Was it still is it still sitting? It just took longer than I thought. What was that? Is, oh, I didn't know. Was that mass still sitting there? Oh, okay. No, it came back. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. And then we see the next item. I, you know, we There's roll back to this. So that's the new history item. It's like, and I, you know, this was the message back to this item. Yeah. So I think that's a, that, I think that's a full walkthrough of the, the features yes. or changes related to checkouts, check in, check out, and or get. So that's it. All right. Anybody have any questions before we end? No, let's see. I don't think there are any questions. Nope. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Well, thanks, everybody.